All right, now it's your turn to try drawing the quantum model of aluminum. Go ahead and get started. Give it a good try. You can do it. And when you feel like you're stuck or you need a little help, or if you feel like you got it, press play and check your work to get some help. Hopefully you could at least make it this far. An aluminum atom has 13 electrons that you have to assign to their appropriate energy levels in the quantum model. Filling in the electrons is fairly easy until you get to the three P's. When you get to three P, you've had, you have 12 electrons assigned and you only need to assign one more. So in that three P energy level, there's only going to be one electron. Now we're gonna represent these electrons uh, with up arrows and down arrows for their spin number. The 1s orbital has one orientation, so we're going to draw one circle. In that circle, we're going to put up arrow and then down arrow. The 2s orbital, same story, one orientation, up arrow, and then down arrow. And then here's where we need to be careful. This is the 2p orbital. It has three orientations. Remember, we're going to put an electron in each orbital first, before we double up. So we're gonna add these electrons in the order, up, 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 down, down, down. That's gonna be important when we talk about this eighth electron over here. The 3s orbital has one orientation, two electrons in there, so up arrow, down arrow. And then we're gonna draw the three orientations for the 3p orbitals, but only one electron will go in there, so the first circle will get an up arrow. We can then represent our m quantum number by looking at our quantum chart. Remember, s orbitals have a m quantum number of zero or dot. p orbitals you can label as px, py, pz, or negative one, zero, positive one. Then an s orbital again with a zero. And then the three p orbitals will label px, py, pz, or negative one, zero, positive one. Now, when we designate the eighth electron, don't be fooled. Here's the common mistake that's made. Oh, here's our first electron, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So kids will put a star above that one. And that is wrong because you're forgetting that when you get to the p orbitals, you add the up arrows first, and then you come back and do the down arrows. So you actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the eighth electron is the first down arrow in the 2p orbital. So that is actually the eighth electron. When we draw this, we'll start by labeling our nucleus with the protons and the neutrons. Then we'll label our 1s orbital, 1s2, and then a little bit larger, 2s orbital, 2s2, and then we also have a 3s orbital. So let's get all the s orbitals out of the way. That is also 3s2. So then we label the p orbitals. We can see in the 2p orbital, there are six electrons. So 2px, 2py, and 2pz are all gonna have two electrons in them. So we're gonna draw our dumbbell-shaped orbitals all the way out as far as we drew 2s and label each one accordingly. 2px2, 2py2, and 2pz2. Now we have to draw the p orbitals for the third energy level. Even though we are not filling two of those orbitals, we still have to draw them. If you have a p orbital, you have all three lobes. Even if they're empty, they're still there. The, those probability regions still exist. So the three p orbitals have to be drawn out as far as 3s was. So the first one here will label 3px1, and then the 3PY and the 3PZ will both be labeled with zeros. So 3PY0 and 3PZ0. And that is the quantum model for an aluminum atom. So what is the valence of an aluminum atom? Well, that's the largest principal quantum number, which in this case is three. If you look on the periodic table, aluminum is found in the third period. Notice aluminum is right here in period number three on the periodic table. Weird. Hmm. All right, uh, valence electrons, if you count them up, aluminum has one, two, three 
valence electrons. And if you look on the periodic table, aluminum is in the third family. Also, aluminum is in the third family, or column number three on the periodic table. Weird. Now, is aluminum paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Well, it has an unpaired electron. An unpaired electron means paramagnetic. Paired up electrons mean diamagnetic, if all the electrons are paired up. Well, they're not all paired up, so aluminum is paramagnetic. Those are the types of questions you will see on your quantum quiz that is upcoming. Make sure you're prepared for that.